Hello and welcome to Infinity. In another few videos I've shown you the tint shades and tones and how we can control those and this is the macro for putting those into practice very very easily and the power of what you can do with it. So all you do is you first of all go to the link down below and follow that and that will give you the download for the macros at the bottom of the page is one for the zip file if you need that and there's also more instructions on how to use it. Here we go to the library. Across to the top from that is the hamburgers. Click on that, say import macros, and your download load should look like this. And this brings in it here um, with the macros here. So the way these work is um, tints um, are where you're saying, I'm going to give you a level and I only select those colours which are above that with red, green and blue are all above it within a pixel. Shades say I'm going to give you a level here and I want red, green and blue always to be below that level. And tones say look at the maximum and the minimum, the gap between them, because when they're all the same then it's it's a grey colour and when they move apart it's sort of greyish and, and so on. So it's more of the tones in the image. And I'm going to give you a range here and I only want you to pick those colours which are within that range. So let's have a look at that. Now this very quickly produces an extra layer here. What it does is duplicate the layer and applies a control here. So I double click on that white square and I get up procedural texture. This is the calculation up here. Don't worry about that uh, unless you were interested in that. If you are, you'll notice that I've got uh, A and B in here are uh, the setting the level and A is the coarse, B is the fine, so this covers 90% and the B covers an extra 10%, which gives you an extra adjustment you can use. And it's divided by C here to give a hardness effect, and the 0.001 is there to stop an accidental divide by zero error. Okay, so the way we use it then, it starts off, they're always zero and they always increase to the right. And if we increase this we're going to see the effect so as this adjusts there you can see in the picture the way it's quite subtly and, and you know sensibly and, uh, and so on having an effect here you can have a little bit of extra detail here if you're going in and want to tweak it very very carefully and the hardness has an effect here where it sort of makes it really more crunchy you can see this better if we take off the bottom layer here and this is what was actually being produced above it in this layer above. It starts off with nothing, so you can only see the original picture. But as you bring this up here, then the picture kind of comes into view. And this is going to be blended normally with an overlay, which you get if you select the big picture there. If you want to see more of this and where the edges are, it's deliberately soft edged so that you don't see where the transition are, but you can bring up the hardness and you start to see there where that effect is. In fact, if you have the hardness fully up and you're bringing the course here down here, you can see near the bottom, this is what you're actually selecting here. So these are a lot more of just those greys and near greys. And as you bring this up, things move out across there. Um, so let's do a bit more of an example with this so we'll take this one up here if I select that layer now this here I might want to use as a mask well that's what this one down here is for so if I click on that what it does is it creates a mask but it puts it at the bottom of the stack because it's useful and it doesn't get in the way when you use it you're normally going to use the original layer let's turn that on you don't need that adjustment layer because that's now been used effectively because if I put the mask above this, I just see that. So I'm going to put it down below so I can see the original image. I can use that if I want to use masks. What I tend to use is the channels here because it's created a spare channel down here. So the way that works is if I put in adjustment and I put in curves. And then now I can adjust this. And what I can do as well, and this shows the power of, of the things that you can do, 
is if I go to the spare channel here, right click there here and load to curves alpha, it puts that into here. Now I'm actually having that far more subtle effect because now I am adjusting the tones, not the whole just, you know, the luminosity as you get with normal curves. It's more constrained. And you can even go to that mask, hit control I to invert the mask. And now you're controlling the more colorful parts of the area. And so if I turn this down here, I can make this quite dark here, but the tonal elements of it are less affected. So you've got a whole bunch of control with this that you can do. What you can do as well with this, I'll just take that off, is go back to this one, turn that off. Here we go. If I got the hardness all the way up here and I bring this down, so you start to see sort of edges on things. If you want to use something like that, you may want going, well, I can like a mask, but I want a bit of feathering along the edge. And this is what you can do with this. So to do that, you select again the that one, the, the one with the partial tone on it, and use the bottom one here, the feathered mask. So I click on that, and that now lets me adjust the radius here. So it defaults to five pixels, which is a little bit, and I can increase that to whatever I want. Sometimes it's easy just to type in here and hit apply. Now that's going to apply it to that mask. So if we do the same thing as before, go to the background layer, turn off the top layer. And now if I hit a uh, curves in here and adjust this, this is the normal one. But if I go to that spare channel now, right click that and say load to curves. Now I'm using the curves to adjust it, but you can see in that transition area, it's got a feathered edge as opposed to that hard transition that you'd get if you only used that full hardness one. It's just a different way of doing it. So there you go. Here's a bunch of macros that are really, really useful for just making really nice changes to an image. I'll probably do use these more in some other adjusting later on some, some full edits and so on. So hope you enjoyed that and thank you very much for watching.